Welcome to the October episode of Amiga Ireland. I'm Irla. I'm Rob. And I'm Luke. And uh, we have a special guest that is joining today. Eamon, how are you doing, Eamon? Hey, folks. Good to be back again. Thanks for putting time aside for us. In this month's episode, multimedia on OS 3 and OS 4. Fire Z gets an update. And extend. A well-known Amiga musician has released his double album. We've got a lot to get through, so let's jump straight into the news. First up... The Sonos controller lets you control your speaker and the playback from your Amiga on OS 3.1, sorry, OS 3, 4.1, and more for OS. Um, so the news here is the addition of OS 3 and 68K Amigas. It can find your speakers on the network and let you control playback, find new stations, download cover art, and many other features here in the release notes. The author, Michael Rupp, was determined to have an Amiga exclusive feature, and so there is one. You can actually export the Sono settings to your Amiga as a backup file. It's pretty cool, and um, of course, he's open to financial support no matter how small. Helps the motivation, doesn't it? Absolutely, that is cool. <laughs> Um, the uh, probably the most the most well known virus checker on the Amiga Virus Z3 has been updated. Um, this update now lets it run on OS4, MorphOS, and AROS, as well as supporting the new vectors and things that are that came along with 3.1.4 and 3.2. So if you've been using it, 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 it usually throws errors when it sees a new version of the operating system. It's not necessarily a, a problem, but just you know because it doesn't recognize it, it thinks it's been meddled with. So now now it rec- correctly recognizes all the different versions of the OS, and uh, so it'll work it'll work fine. So uh, yeah, update it if you're if you're a regular user there, and it's on Aminet. Extend has released his album and the name of the album is called The Next. It's a double album. The album was mainly uh, recorded uh, during this year. Extend has uh, created a a massive amount of demos in modules and uh, music for games. So if you're into uh, electronic music, demos in music, Amiga music in general, you can listen to it for free from his website extendmusic.eu. Amiga, a project to dynamically optimize any website for viewing on Amiga web browsers. Basically, this is a proxy server which you run on a Raspberry Pi on your local network, and by simply setting your DNS on your Amiga to that of the device that's running .amiga. Then if you add .amiga to the end of any URL, the proxy server will automatically dither and reduce the number of colors used in imagery and overall make every website more Amiga friendly. The project is a work in progress by Robin Southern. We'll have a link in the show notes for Robin's Twitter and he can also be found hanging out on the Amiga Build Discord server. Oh, cool. wow. <laughs> Neat way of doing it. Good one, Eamon. You're putting us to shame there. That's pretty cool. I'm going to have to check that out. Media Vault 1.4 adds comprehensive podcast support. Uh, now, Media Vault allows you to quickly find and play internet radio stations, and you can search by genre, location, or by name, and so on. Um, it's made by George Sokianos, also known as Walk Hero, and he has just previewed the latest feature that will be released very shortly. Uh, it could even be out by now. The latest update brings comprehensive podcast support that includes show notes, cover art, very, very nice. You can see it in action on what looks like an OS4 machine and uh, support them on Kofi if you find it useful. Um, personally, I think it's incredible and it would be, a, I think it's an important application, you know, for me anyway, when I get an A1222 plus. Um, so well done, George. Thanks. Thanks for that. And it's nice to see uh, the Amiga Ireland podcast among your subscriptions there. The Mr. Multisystem uh, pre-order batch is sold out. Now, if, you, if you're not familiar with this, this is basically uh, a Mr. in a nice case with nice modular parts that you, you know, so effectively it's a Mr. console. So, and the Mister is, you know, an ev- evolution of the the Mist, which is kind of an FPGA multi system. So you can you can uh, change the cores on it to run uh, like as an Amiga, as an Atari ST, as 
uh, any number of home computers and consoles. But the idea be- behind this is that it's kind of a very user-friendly console system. So you plug in modules that take, let's say, the the nine pin connectors or the SNES connectors or whatever kind of you know whatever kind of um, connectors you want. And this this is basically a kind of a modular system that does all that. And you know, you sit sits under the TV in the living room. The RMC Retro, as they're called now, teamed up with an, an electronics company to to produce this. And the first batch was five hundred and sold out straight away. So they're looking into a second batch now. And it really looks interesting, um, you know, for not not just for Amiga stuff, but like you know, retro in general. It's uh, it, it looks like an incredible little machine. Thomas Rapp, the author of WB Doc, has be- updated his version to version two point four two five. Um, WB Doc is a little tool that allows you to create. As you can probably have noticed, a dock at the bottom of your screen. It creates uh, versions for for systems 1.3 and at the same time for systems 3 and uh, 3.1, 3.2 uh, and so on. Uh, the, the, this version uh, provides a lot of new bug fixes, uh, updates and uh, skins as well. Amiberry once again is updated. This time around, it adds support for reading real Amiga floppy disks. And that's thanks to support for Drawbridge by Rob Smith. So if you've got a stack of Amiga floppy disks gathering dust and you want to read them in Amiberry, get yourself over to amiga.robsmithdev.co.uk and add yourself onto the winning list. Yeah, that's, that's a really nice touch. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, this is just going to be perfect for anyone that has any old projects that would otherwise be locked away on disk. Okay, so um, next we're going to have a look at a magazine. What do we have this month, guys? I have the uh, September-October edition of Amiga Future, and it's uh, issue 152. And um, our our own John Gervin will be delighted with the cover on this because it's a full cover of Turbo Tomato. And, uh, you know, it's a very nice review of it inside. You got a two page review. Uh, it seems to do quite well. It, it, it has uh, impressed the, uh, the writers. Um, there's a look at some German hardware and we don't we don't see much of this here. But on the A1K.org forum, you get a lot of uh, German hardware development that don't really make it to us normally. But there, there there's um, a new um, USB card for Zorro machines. Um, now, it's, it's only a slow one and it's kind of a like it's usb one and it's a kit basically you have to solder yourself but it is the only kind of uh standalone usb solution that there is available at the moment and there's also uh like an accelerator for an amiga 2000 which is uh, an unusual thing as well an 030 accelerator there hasn't been one of them produced in about 20 30 years like so um this is um you know pretty cool hardware coming out of germany and they're both both getting a look in the magazine other just news from aminet as bean versus the animator uh, review and uh, and a, gu- a guide for running uh, OS 3.2 on Vampire for bootloading the Vampire with it, um, and then reviews of a couple of older games, a couple of newer games, and uh, yeah, it's a, generally a good read this month or this this is this issue. Lovely stuff, and congrats to John for getting on the cover. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, some great artwork. Let's move on to the game section. end of October, Puny Jam number two will announce the theme of its competition. Uh, this is a good time to get practicing. It's a, a game jam, but for text adventures. You'll need to use the Puny form library. And if you remember Tristam Islands that used that used Puny form and was released uh, for not only Mac, Linux, Windows, but also Amiga, Commodore machines, Spectrum, Atari, many more actually get the game consoles too. So now is the time to get familiar with the setup until the theme of the content, uh, the contest is announced in full. Good luck. And we've got another port to our beloved C64. Uh, again, MSX port from Juan Martinez, and the port is by Aris Cavallos. Uh, it's a fabulous, it's absolutely fabulous 
arcade platform, and here is what the indie retro news says about it. In this fabulous looking game, as a port over to the C64, you play as Sir Bernard on his own personal quest to battle a curse through the creepy rooms of the enchanted castle Scarecreep. Along the way you will traverse through 80 stages while avoiding enemies and the race against the clock to find the key to exit through each door and hopefully complete your quest to be free of this awful curse once and for all. The game looks absolutely brilliant to be honest and I look forward to playing it. The next Amiga Live monthly online game tournament is taking place on the 29th of October and they're going to be playing Shadow Fighter which will be followed by Minsky's Furballs on November 26th. All you have to do to take part is visit AmigaLive.com, click on Game Time, register your interest, and download Amiga Live. The tournament is streamed live on Twitch, and even if you're not competing, you can join in on chat. Nice one, Eamon. Do you, um, do you play much Amiga Live? Have you had much uh, experience with it? Yes, I've been participating for the last number of months, and we've been playing things like Dino Blaster, Micro Machines... Speedball 2, IK+, Plus, just a really good excuse to play a lot more Amiga games and against people who are generally a lot better than myself. Yeah, brilliant. Nice. Well, our last game for this month is called Catch It. It's a workbench game by Giovanni Yocabelli. And I apologize uh, if I didn't pronounce that properly, but you in this game, you have to navigate a maze uh, to take the key and then get to the exit door. But as you get closer to your opponents, they begin to move towards you. It's very nice uh, to have something like this as a workbench game. We've linked straight to the um, LHA download because, I mean, the Aminet page seems to be having issues. Um, you know, this game works on 68K Amigas with uh, Workbench 3, and um, that's well worth checking out. Now, hopefully that's enough gaming news to get you through to next month. Uh, now we'll have a look at what discoveries we have for this month. Right, well, Ami Gemini lets you do more with the web on your 68k Amiga. So this would make um, a good addition to Eamon's dot Amiga. And we mentioned in our last episode that um, Ami Gemini was released by Carl Jekyll in Dublin. It's a browser, but not for the HTTP web that we're so familiar with over the years. This is an alternative internet that cuts back on bloat significantly. But rather than explain Gemini here, I'll just explain what Ami Gemini lets you do on your Amiga. Because even if you're not interested in the protocol, you'd probably be interested in more possibilities for your Amiga. But I installed it yesterday and ran it from within Workbench. It's a very small download and uh, naturally enough it's pretty quick. You do need an O2O 0 Amiga, internet capability and SSL support, but besides that it'll work on a 68k Amiga. When it opened up I was given access to things that are not easily accessible uh, on Amiga typically. I was able to read The Guardian, the NPR uh, news websites and other news sources. Um, now, we don't have a, any really working RSS reader for OS3 at the moment, so this is just a fantastic addition that I really, really like it. Sources like The Guardian and NPR for Gemini already existed as bridges, and what Carl has done is link to these from Ami Gemini. Really handy. Now, if you know of other useful Gemini bridges or pages, just Gemini pages worth including in the application, get in touch with him because he's open to suggestions. So you won't be in completely unfamiliar territory using Ami Gemini, so it is well worth checking out. But he's also included some Amiga-specific destinations I could, could visit, which is a really nice touch. I discovered something called UHC Tools, one place I didn't know about, but it has really great little applications and scripts for Amiga. And of course, his own page has some great content, downloads and tutorials. So you can access the Amiga subreddit as well, and plenty more. And there's also social media, with um, access to the midnight.pub social media site. There's more to it, but if you can connect to the internet, all I'd say to you is, you'd be crazy enough to try this out. Well done, Carol. The Mega Bill has received an Emmy Award. It's really worth noting that a person that's uh, really involved and worked really hard in our community received such a great award actually. There was no mention uh, regarding Amiga, but still, he's one of our own people. So congratulations, Bill. His day job is a, a, a cameraman and he works mm -hmm. on some fairly high profile stuff. So uh, yeah, great to see. Brilliant. Congratulations, Bill. 
The Amiga by Dirk W. Hoffman is an open source Mac OS Amiga emulator, which is very Mac centric. And it's, it's unusual because it's actually not based on WinUAE like a lot of other options. You can really tell that there's been a lot of effort put into the user experience and the UI design to make this feel right at home on the Mac. You can find this project on GitHub and of course we'll link it in the show notes. I very nearly installed that because I have an M1 Mac and um, I was trying to install applications as much as possible that are built for that processor. Mm -hmm. And just when I was looking for it, I found that um, somebody had made an FSUAE build for the M1 Mac. I just went with that, but I must give the Amiga a go because it does look really nice. The preferences contains uh, quite an extensive set of controls which you can adjust to modify the way that the visual image is displayed to recreate that authentic CRT style image on your modern display. Mm -hmm. But it's really nice to have uh, a bit of a choice there when it comes to uh, emulation options on the Mac, which wasn't always the case. The last item for discoveries is um, some news about the Amiga Ireland event in January. So the story is that once we have a um, contract signed and a deposit paid, then we can officially say the event is confirmed. And the date that, that works best for us this year is actually the 28th and 29th of January. That's the date we have asked for and we have it agreed pretty much, but we, like I say, we need to sign the sign the form and transfer the deposit before it's guaranteed. So, you know, I wouldn't go booking, uh, you know, hotel rooms or anything like that yet. But if you wanted to block out time uh, to attend the event, the 28th and 29th of January are the dates to do it. And uh, once that's all confirmed, then we can start um, adding events and, and stuff like that and let you know what it's going to what it's going to look like this time around. Cool. Looking forward to that. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be different, I'd say. Let's move on to our eyebrows section. Welcome to our eyebrows section where we look at websites that are a pleasure to use, even on classic Amigas. Uh, this month, the first website is Eftegory, E-F-T-E-G-A-R-I-E. -E. Uh, you can get it in our show notes and make life a lot easier. It's based in the Netherlands. This latest blog post uh, from this author includes tips for long haul flights, self-confidence and a review of the book called The Body Keeps the Score, which is actually um, a book that's used a lot in um, psychology and psychotherapy trainings. Um, but it's also a very, uh, you know, anybody, it's a book that anybody could read. It's just, so it's an interesting blog, an interesting person, I suppose, with an interesting blog that's easily accessed on Amiga. I haven't actually checked in to see what the latest posts are in quite a while, but it's a good one. And um, finally, in this section, another website that works quite well is the Ultimate Electronics Book. The aim of this website is to make electronics understandable by not only teaching it from the ground up, uh, but also showing the relationship between the maths, the physics and real world practice. That's that's what they say their intention is. And they do, you know, if you look at the uh, table of contents there, they do um, they do show you, you know, go to the fundamentals and try and explain them really well. Um, I, you know, I wish something like that existed when I was in college. Um, so the first section starts from basics, which is algebra and scales before going on to complex numbers and equations. The second section uh, goes starts with the theory of electrons at rest uh, versus electrons in motion and explains the idea of ground, Ohm's law and switches. So all kind of fundamental stuff. Um, interactive circuit simulations won't work in eyebrows, but you know they are there. They're implemented as well. Um, but I discovered the site on eyebrows and got plenty out of it uh, without those. So um, the maths could be intimidating to newbies, I'd have to say, um, even as not a newbie. Um, but besides that, it is like having somebody in the pub kind of explain electronics to you uh, on the back of a napkin. So um, it's a work in progress and there are seven, several more chapters yet to come. But uh, worth checking out if you're um, curious about electronics. Absolutely. I'm just looking through that there now. And uh, yeah, it's covering some some really good stuff. Thanks to everyone for listening and thanks to Eamon for joining us. We appreciate it, Eamon. Um, some really nice items there, actually. And uh, until next time. Music was by Virtual Dimensions, Banjo Gaioil, and Extend. We'll see you next month. In the meantime, take care. The song of the month this month is Underground Life by Okeanos the of the Electronic Knights, which came sixth in the Amiga Ireland Mod competition in 2021. So congratulations to Okeanos. Really, really nice tune. So we will leave you with this uh, lovely tune to listen to. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
So to explain to us where babies come from is uh, <laughs> Rob Cranley. <laughs> um, well, when a nerd and a woman are very much in love, 